Hi, and welcome to question seven of the 2022 Leave Insert uh, Paper 1 uh, Ordinary Level question. So as always, if you want a copy of the notes, I work enough to send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So question seven here, and our question seven is the first question of section B, and they're generally very long. So we're in for a long video. As always, I'd suggest pausing and trying the question yourself. If you're successful, well, then you have this skill. If you're not successful, then this is an indication of a skill maybe we need to brush up on. Lots of words here. So Joseph is doing a training session. That's not very important. During the session, his heart rate, now they're using function notation here to represent that. And you sometimes it's f of x, sometimes it's g of x. In this case, they're using h of x. So his heart rate is measured in beats uh, per minute. So that might be important, beats per minute. Okay, uh, if it's hard to fair enough, something is being measured, and they're calling that a H function. For part of the session, H of X can be modeled using the following function. Now, it's an awkward function, it's got decimals, but this function is cubic, and it looks something like that. Now, ideally, I'd, I'd graph it, but I'm not sure if that's going to be a very helpful right this second. Um, let's keep going. It says X is the time. Now, they're using minutes from the start of the session, and they're measuring this from a range of zero to six minutes. So this particular thing describes the change in his heart rate. Now, it might only be a segment of this graph, okay? So it's rising at that pace. Now, if you're exercising, your heart rate is not going to be going down, okay? So the change in his heart rate, the slope of his heart rate is increasing, is what we'd expect. And it's increasing in this way during this time frame. Now, part A, part one says, complete the table below to show the values of H of X for the given values. Now, if I test this, and if I found H of 160, okay, it should give me, sorry, H of one. Yeah, X is the time. So H of one, let me just clear that off. Okay, H of one should give me an answer of 160. So let's check that with the calculator. Now it's an awkward function, okay, because of all the decimals. So I'm going to have to be flicking back and forth. I'm going to represent the x with empty brackets, okay. So it's uh, negative 0.38, then empty brackets for x, okay, to the power of 3. Keep going, that's the first term programmed in, plus 2.6, again, empty brackets for the x. And that's squared. Take away 0, point, oh, zero, zero point 0.13 times empty brackets for x, uh, plus the 158. Now, I can't press equal there because there's no value of x. So we said that when x is 1, we should get an answer of 160. Now, I don't want to clear this off, otherwise I have to reprogram it. I'm going to be using this calculation again and again. So that should be... Now, it's, it must be rounded. Oh, each value is correct, nearest whole number. So 160.09 rounds down to 160. So that's all that's happening. We just have to replace the x value with 0, 2, 4, and 5. We could test it again, um, but I'm fairly sure now it's going to be working. So I'll go down and then just like replace that with 0. Replace this with 0. OK, and do it again for the last value, okay. So at zero minutes, his starting heart rate was 158. Now, in a way, we actually already knew that without doing a calculation, because in a function, this number at the end is the y-intercept, and it's where it crosses the y-axis. But that's, yeah, that's fairly advanced knowledge. If we test this with two and four and five, we should get answers like this, although I should have said this, we should so, uh, show a calculation, okay? So it's a bit cumbersome, but the logic behind it is, if you program the calculator wrong and you didn't show a sample calculation, you'd have gotten the wrong answer the whole way along, okay? Now, I've, I've run out of space there, my own bad. I shouldn't need to go, I should have started further over on the left or written smaller, but that value there, we said, was h of 0 is equal to 158. Now, 
if this is correct, and let's say you have the wrong answer here, 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 and here, but this sample calculation was correct, the assumption would be that you had made an error in the calculator and you would get marks, okay, as opposed to no work shown, all wrong answer is zero because you could be just guessing. And that's that's the logic there. Now the answers there, if I fill them in, uh, were the 158, then the um the, the, the three other values. Okay. I just haven't worked them out, but I've shown them here. And that's part A, part one. Now it's only five marks, so it's not you know that many marks, but still it it's it, it's fairly easy to kind of figure it out on the day. But there is a lot of words, so make sure you read it carefully. Now, part A, part two says, draw the graph of y is equal to h of x. So this is our x value, okay? This is our y value. But y and h of x are the same thing. So really all they're saying is graph it, okay? Now they give you a, an example there, six, one, six, nine. But if I go from zero, one, so zero, one, fifty-eight, that's the starting point, okay? Then when x is 1, it's 160. So it's rising up. That would make sense. He's starting to exercise a minute in of jogging, whatever. Your heart rate is going to go up. Then it goes up to 165. Then it goes up to 171. Then it goes up to 175. Okay. Then 175. And why does it decrease? Now, if I graph that, it's going to look something like this. Now it's a bad graph, but whatever. I wonder why is it going down? Um, like that means you must be stopped exercising. You know, the more you exercise, usually your heart rate will keep going up until it reaches max. Now I actually graphed it here in the notes, the actual equation. Okay, and you'll see there that it, between zero and six, it matches up with what we we drew. Okay. Now I didn't for some reason fill in the lines here, probably just to keep it clear. But I should join those points together in a, in, a, in a curve line. And that's part two. Now, part B here says, explain what the coordinates of the point A6169 uh, represent in the context of Joseph, uh, Joseph's heart rate. So really, it's just like after six minutes, um, his heart rate is 169. Yeah, that's really all it means. Okay. Now it says then, using the same axes and scales, continue your graph on the previous page to show the following information. From the point represented by A, stay, um, Joseph heart rate stays at the same level for the next two minutes and then decreases at a steady rate of 10 beats per minute. So I probably have this done out with graph on the next page. Okay. So that's the graph we had. That's the A6 uh, on the X, 169 on the Y. So for the next two minutes, it stays steady, okay? There's, there's no ch change, okay? And then it goes down by 10. So 170 down by 10 is 160. Down by 10 is 150. That's it. That's all it's saying. Um, again, what reading the question, you could, you could, it's not, sometimes I'm guilty of overthinking a question. I assume it's going to be harder than it is. And I end up trying to do all sorts of convoluted stuff when it was as obvious as, as it was. And these two parts are fairly obvious. Um, and that's a feature of question seven. Don't overthink it. You know, just give it a good read and do your best. And generally, you know, you, you should hopefully, if you understand the context of the question, you should be right um, more often than you're wrong, which is it's where we want to be. Um, now, question seven, part D. It says, during his training session, the number of calories per minute that Joseph is burning after X minutes can be modeled by this uh, function, okay? Um, so it's, they're making a new function, but they're integrating the other function. It says, use the table, uh, in use information in the table or graph to work out C of six, the number of calories per minute that Joseph is burning six minutes after the start of the session. So lots and lots of words. If I was trying to like, BS this, um, all I do is substitute h of x instead here and try to simplify it and see if that helps. Now, I could go down that path, but we're being asked to find c of 6. And we're told that that's 0 0.1 times, 
And I'm going to use brackets to represent that. Take away 7. And the question is, what's h of x? Now, they're saying the number of calories after 6 minutes. So it's basically, for a simpler way of looking at that, it's just what's h of 6. And actually, in the notes, that's not how I've done it. And h of 6, if I go back, was 169. Okay. So that h of 6 is the same thing as 169. And do the maths of that, that would be um, 0.1 by that is, I suppose it's a calculator job. Just go to the answer. Okay, it's 9.9 .9 calories. Okay. Now, um, in a sense, in the notes here, what I did was, I originally said was, I replaced the h of x by, actually, I didn't do it. Actually, no, I did it right here. So I've just said what h of x is, but they're specifically saying how many calories is he burning after the six minutes. And that's why I can make the leap to h of 6 equals 169. And once I realize that this and this are the same thing, I swap them out, put it to the calculator, and I, I, I arrive at 9.9. .9. Does it make sense? Okay, so how many calories would you burn? In a minute of, of exercise, you know, nine point nine wouldn't sound uh, crazy. Or, um, if like, if you're burning hundreds of calories every minute, should we need to take in twenty thousand calories a day? And, and we don't. Okay, so it doesn't ring any bells. So I'm fairly happy that we're, we're correct. It's only worth five marks. Now, part E says Joseph has a smartwatch that beeps every fifteen seconds during the session. It beeps for the first time at exactly two fifty-five, as Joseph starts the session. So let's just record that. Um, let's do it over here. So st start is 2.55 p.m. And then it beeps for the last time, so it finishes, okay, at 3.23 p.m. So you can see there, he's been running for, even the difference there is 23 minutes after the three and five minutes up to it. So it's 28 minutes is the training session. Work out how many to times in total the smartwatch beeps during the session, including the first and the last beep. So you could just like count them up and go in the first minute there's four, okay, in the next minute there's four and, and keep going up. But I could approach this a different way and go like, it's beeping every 15 seconds. So how many 15s are there in 28 minutes? Now, they're not the same units, but I can always convert minutes to seconds, okay? And that'll give me, um, let's see now, 28 by 60, 28 by, by 60 is 1680. And then you're just gonna finish off with how many 15s, that's division in 1680, so divide that by 15, and that gives me 112 times. Now, I hope that's right, because the first and last thing is, is making me um, uneasy. But let's see what I did in the notes here. We have the start time, the finish time, um, start time, finish time. Take them away, we've got 28 minutes. OK, it's the same, same way. You know, those questions can be off-putting, but if, if you're not sure what to do, just do what feels right and do something. Okay. Uh, taking them away would have got you up to the two marks for sure. And then some effort at trial and error probably would have got you up to the three. Okay. Or in the case of this, like th making that leap that they're, the 15 seconds and minutes are different. And even maybe you would have gone, well, I need them all in the same unit. Let's do that. And maybe, maybe you would have got stuck there, but then the leap to how many 15s in 1680, that's division, brought us to the answer. Now, 7 part F, now this H prime X means this has been differentiated, okay? And they give us this new equation. So I think we had the graph earlier on. I just remember, I put it in here, I thought. So this particular graph here, now, when it's something is going down, the slope of it is, is um, negative. Now, eventually, before it's, as it's kind of stopping going down and before it starts going up, for a, for a, a moment, the slope is zero. There's no change. Then the slope goes up. There's a positive change. And eventually, it gets to the point here at the top. The slope is no longer going up. It's not going down yet. And the slope there is zero. 
and then it goes negative again. So negative, zero, positive, zero, negative. And what differentiation does is it gives us an equation to describe the slope of that, the change of that at any point. And that's what they're giving us here. So they're giving us that new equation that tells us the slope at any point. And the slope is the heart rate. And it says then, uh, solve the equation, this thing, okay, to find out how long after the start of the session, Joseph's heart rate is at maximum. Um, for between zero and six minutes. X to them to four means it's just any number. It could be a fraction, could be whatever. It's every number between zero and six, including zero and six. Then give your answer in minutes, correct the two decimal places. So you're seeing there when the slope is equal to zero. That's what that's saying. Now, if you remember I said a minute ago, um, that's at the maximum minimum point. And they want the maximum. Okay. So really what it's all it's saying is, can we solve this equation? Now, as I write it out, it's helping me to remember that this is all one variable equal to zero. So this is a quadratic. Now, I can't solve this any other way other than using the quadratic formula. So just for simplicity, I'm going to just go to the answer here. That's what we're saying here. Okay, this is our quadratic equal to zero. Now, I'm comparing this to the general form of any quadratic. And I'm doing that so I can identify that the number in front of the x squared is the negative 1.14. I've written that out here. The b value, the number in front of the x there is 5.2, and I've written that out. And then the number here at the end is negative 0 0.13. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, and that's what this is. And we can use this to solve any quadratic, whereas other methods are faster, but they won't be helpful in a complicated quadratic like this. Now, all I've done then is everywhere I see the letter, I put the um, appropriate number, and I've done it hopefully correctly. So instead, the B in brackets, I put the 5.2. Then B is repeated, and I put the 5.2 again. Okay, I'm, just, I'm keeping all the other things. Then I'm putting, instead of the A value, I'm putting the negative 1.14. And then instead of the C value, I'm putting the negative 0.13. Okay, and that's the stuff I was given from the quadratic. On the bottom there is 2 times A, and the A value was negative 1.14. It depends how you want to do this. Um, like I could, and actually I've seen people do this differently in, in, in recent times, and it's kind of made me change how I do it. I could at this stage use the calculator and type it in once with a plus, and then again with a negative. And I'd end up my answer, I'd end up down here. Okay. What I've done here is I've just resolved the square root. Let me clear this off. Okay. Let's clear it off. What I've done here is I've simp I've simplified using the calculator this particular square root. Now the problem with that is if I've rounded this, I can introduce a rounding error here. But I, I think I, I don't think I have because I would be I wouldn't do that. Um, but it's a very easy mistake to make and one I would have made myself in the past. In essence, I've learned my lesson. But once I get to here, what I've done is I've split it with the plus and I've split it with the minus, okay, this minus here. So I end up with two answers, and that's a feature of quadratics. You'll generally end up with two answers. Now I get there one answer where x is 0 0.02 and one answer where x is 4 point whatever. Now they say to me they want the maximum, okay, and in essence, I'm going to have to do it twice. So I take these x values and put them into my original equation, the one we were given back at the beginning, the non-differentiated equation that describes this movement. Okay. Now I put in my 0 0.02, whatever, and the full number, otherwise I'll be a, I'll get the rounding error. And I got 157. I put in the other number, okay, and I got this number. Now which of these is the maximum? Well, the bigger number is the maximum. And that's it. So there's a super amount of work there. And in essence, they're often asking this just more straightforward. And they might say, find the maximum or and or minimum points of this particular function. And then you'd have to differentiate, and then you'd have to put it equal to zero, and then solve it, and then use your x values to find the corresponding y values using the original equation. And this is the classic maximum minimum problems you, you get at leaving or pass level. Once you know how to do them, they're pretty straightforward. You're just following a methodology. The trick is remembering how to do them.
which is always easier said than done. So take your time with that. What having a go, make sure you have your, your, a, a good skill in using the quadratic formula. This is a particularly awkward one because of all the decimal, but you know numbers are just numbers, and even if they're awkward, and you should be able to come out with, unfortunately, a measly five marks after a lot of work. That takes time. But in a different year with a different marking scheme, that could be worth more marks. Right, um, that's the end of question seven. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Um, and please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thank you. See you in question nine.